Welcome to RVing with the Maracas. Today we're going to talk about our full-time mobile internet setup. We live in a rural area with only one choice for broadband data, that's Windstream DSL, where we were paying $103 a month for 20 megabits down and two up. That included a landline phone, but we never really used that much. We had been subscribed to Dish Network for cable TV, but cut that cord early last year. We switched to YouTube TV, but turned that off also. We don't watch much, and I hate commercials, and watching TV news is bad for your brain. We use Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and YouTube Premium, which is YouTube with no commercials. It also includes Google Music. At home, we have three TVs with two Roku boxes, one Chromecast, and an Amazon Fire Stick. In the RV, we have three TVs with over-the-air antenna and one Chromecast device. We each have our own laptop, Kindle, and iPad. And of course, we both have cell phones. I use Google Fi for my cell carrier, where you have calls and text unlimited. You pay for all the data you use, but it's great since we live in a bad cell phone reception area and I use Wi-Fi for phone calls, so it works inside. It's $20 a month plus $10 per gigabyte of data. Rhonda uses Straight Talk, which is about $47 a month with unlimited phone, text, and data, and it uses Verizon. It's great for on the road, but at our house, you have to go outside to talk on the phone, and it gets no data, and there's no tethering. I was really getting fed up with our home internet service since the upload speed was slow, and it was just really expensive for what we were getting. We also wanted to have internet on the road. After following the Mobile Internet Resource Center for a while and learning more about what is current on mobile data and signing up for their research service, I thought it would be possible to go mobile data full-time for both at home and on the road. The iPhone came out in mid-2007. It was the first big-time data-connected smartphone. There were others with data email and really bad internet browsing, but the iPhone made it cool for normal people. I guess not being normal, in 2007, I got the Samsung Blackjack. It was 3G and ran on AT&T. It had email and a primitive web browser. It ran Windows Mobile with a 1.3 megapixel camera, Bluetooth, and a micro SD card, which you could load and play all the music and podcasts you wanted. Awesome! This is the HTC Thunderbolt. I got it in March 2011. It was the first 4G phone available on Verizon. I bought it the first day it came out. Before the big reveal, let's look at how much speed do you need and how much overall data does it take to use services like Netflix, YouTube, or Spotify. If one person is streaming video, you can get by with 5 megabits per second. For two people, it takes at least 10. If you use 3 gigabytes per hour for streaming video and do that for two hours per day, that's about 180 gigabytes per month. So a plan that offers 15 gigabytes per month isn't going to do you very good. We've used that in a day. There are ways to cut back on data you use by limiting streaming to standard definition, which is yucky. During this process, I learned that my Chromecast device was using almost half a gigabyte per day on images for the screensaver. It runs all day, just as long as it's plugged in, whether or not you think you're using it. The bottom line is you need unlimited data, and not fake unlimited data where the carrier slows you way down after, say, 15 or 20 gigabytes, like a lot of phone plans. Super duper cool unlimited. So... What we did is go with a new Verizon prepaid unlimited data plan for $65 a month with a new 8800L hotspot. I also got several antennas to test out getting a stronger connection. At home, I now use two of the mini magnet antennas mounted on my metal roof, and they work fine. On the road, the cheap soft whip antennas or the MIMO antenna have worked everywhere we've been camping, usually with better speeds than we get at home. There are several ways to measure speed. Technical stuff like signal strength or using speed tests like fast.com. But I favor the Rhonda test. Just use Netflix or YouTube and if it works and doesn't buffer, it's good. I also have an iPad with a $20 a month unlimited data plan that works well. It was a great deal considering the full price of the iPad that I didn't pay. 
So after a little over two months, this RV hack setup is working great for us. It's easy to move from the house to the RV and stay connected. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to follow along on our RV adventures. We have plenty of camping and more RV hacks to share during 2019. And we'd love to have you along for the ride.